On our series of channels, we are no strangers to high-speed video cameras. Back in 2009, we started with our first high-speed capable camera, the Casio EX-F1. Then, in 2011, we added another Casio camera, the EX-ZR100, to our filming setup. And in 2015, we got our hands on a Sony RX100 Mark IV. All of these cameras were capable of recording some pretty impressive imagery, especially for the time and the money. But despite what I wanted to use them for, they were really just standard cameras that happened to have the ability to also record high-speed video. So they were either really lacking in features and or the image quality really suffered when used for this purpose. We've been using these cameras to film for as long as a decade now, and I think it's time for a bit of an upgrade. We went out and purchased a Kronos 1.4 high-speed video camera. This is about the closest thing there is to a budget-friendly, purpose-built high-speed camera. The manufacturer made a pretty big splash with their Kickstarter campaign to fund these cameras at the end of 2016. And since then, there have been quite a few upgrades to the cameras, mostly software, but a few hardware changes as well. And now they're in the process of releasing a newer 1080p-capable version of this camera, but the older 1.4 model is still very capable and has a price tag that's a little bit easier to deal with. So that about covers how we ended up here. In this video, we'll show a lot of test footage that we recorded with this camera. When the camera first showed up, the only lens I had bought for it was this 25mm 1.4 f-stop lens purchased from Amazon. For its size and $20, it's actually a pretty impressive little lens. And here are our very first test shots from this camera. It was a pretty overcast day and had just finished raining, so not a whole lot of light to use. But these clips we recorded of an airsoft gun shooting through leaves still came out surprisingly well. Even at the highest 16x9 resolution of 720p, this camera records faster than anything else we had ever used. And if you decrease the recording resolution, the frame rate can be increased. Though for extremely high frame rates, we would definitely need some more light. This is a close-up of a droplet of water on a blade of grass being splashed by a passing BB. And after getting those three sort of proof-of-concept shots, we went on to try some other things. Most of the rest of this video is a tried-and-true favorite of ours, shooting soda cans filled with water. There wasn't really any plan here, we just needed some footage to work with and figure out what seemed to work best, as well as test a few different setups. We started off using an old 177 pellet gun that admittedly didn't have a rear sight, so the accuracy is a bit questionable. First, here's the real-time footage at 30 frames a second. Ready? Yep. Then, here's the same thing recorded at 300 frames a second using the Casio EXF1, our first high-speed camera. And finally, here's the shot from the Kronos 1.4, recorded at 4490 frames a second. You've presumably noticed the large black bars at the top and bottom of the screen. That's because we've sacrificed some vertical resolution in order to increase the frame rate. This is the same way the Casio high-speed cameras work, and is an easy way to maximize that recording frame rate. One of the things we were testing, though, is a bit of a novel solution to increase the field of view and awareness of what's happening. Well, I guess I'm not sure how novel it is exactly, since we had done this quite a few times in years past. To demonstrate what I'm talking about, here is another can that we shot at 30 frames a second. And again, we have our footage from the Kronos recorded at over 4,000 frames a second. We get a nice, clear, high-resolution, high-frame-rate view of our target, but really can't see anything else because of that letterboxing. But what we can do is record using two cameras at the same time, nearly in the same spot, and overlay the footage from the Kronos onto the EXF1 footage. Obviously, the footage from the Casio is at a much lower frame rate and resolution, so it doesn't quite match up but we can get it pretty close. Resampling the footage, adding a little bit of blur, and darkening the background a little bit helps kind of blend things together, at least in my opinion. Finding out the best way to make this work is one of the things we were testing here. 
In editing this video, we mess with some other things like making the background even more blurry, or even black and white, but it seems like just darkening it a little bit and having a little bit of Gaussian blur to smooth out any big pixels does a pretty good job. And that's the basic idea, or at least one of the ideas of how we'd like to use this camera. And now that we had better lighting, it wasn't perfect, but it was better, we wanted to try a maximum frame rate shot. As you can see, the lower resolution means a significant drop in clarity. There's also a lot of image noise, though more light and a bigger lens should help with that. Despite those shortcomings though, look how slow that is. That's really impressive. In fact, for this pellet gun, it seems like this is too slow. It is unnecessarily slow. It seems like this resolution and frame rate would be best served by close-ups. With such a high frame rate and a relatively low resolution, there are an awful lot of considerations to make, so it'll probably take some practicing to get good shots with this. But for an impromptu recording on a somewhat cloudy day with a $20 lens, it's not so bad. And now we'll show a few more clips that we recorded using different angles and frame rates and just testing things out. Clips recorded at 800 pixels wide seem to demonstrate some fairly significant vertical banding, which is something we'll need to do some testing to see if we can fix, otherwise we'll probably just be avoiding this resolution range. I'm not sure we'll really be using extremely wide resolutions like this, but you can see how useful it is to have that Casio footage played in the background. Alternatively, or in addition to this, we could crop the footage and pan across it to follow a moving object. At this point, we had enough test shots of that 177 pellet gun, so we switched to a more powerful 25 caliber pellet gun. Even with us barely knowing what we're doing, the footage out of this camera is really impressive. Normally, we'll slow down and overlay audio of the shot for the slow motion footage, but in this video, we just didn't want to take the time to do all that, really. That's not so much what we were testing. Also, this camera is so slow, we might have to revisit the way we add in that audio. With the aperture wide open, this lens has a reasonably short focal length and gets very soft around the edges. Here, our shooter, Sean, was trying to shoot the tab off of these cans. Hey! Yeah. Nice! <laughs> and he did it. That's a pretty impressive shot. This initial testing was pretty basic, although I hope still interesting to watch, and will really help us use the camera and plan for shots going forward. We've already made some accessories and modifications to the camera, and got our hands on a few more lenses to try it with. Some of that stuff will probably show up in a video somewhere down the line. But before we end this video, here are a few test shots from one of the other lenses we acquired. This is a 50mm prime lens with a wider aperture that lets us get even more light to that sensor and works much better for high speed recording. And with the camera set to the maximum frame rate of 38,500 frames a second, here is a butterfly taking off from a flower.
At this recording frame rate, played back at 30 frames a second, it takes several minutes for one flap of the wings to complete. That's, uh, that's pretty slow. And here's a nerf dart at that same frame rate grazing past a flower. We also tested the camera with the 160mm zoom lens, and we're still kind of trying to figure out how to best use that one, but here's a few birds in flight. There's some weird vignetting and chromatic aberration, but I think a better black calibration would help fix some of that. And we'll finish up this video with some close-up shots filmed with that same zoom lens. Realistically, I'm not too sure how often we'll be able to use this camera, but I'm really excited to see what we can do with it. No, it's still not quite a phantom high-speed camera or something they use to film TV shows or movies, but it's pretty darn impressive for the price. There's nothing that even comes close, in my opinion. We'll probably still be using the Sony camera as a backup and to film multiple angles of the same thing. And when we want to maximize the frame rate on the Kronos, I think using the Casio camera to provide backup footage is a pretty good option. I hope everyone was able to find at least something in this video interesting, and keep your eyes on this channel as we do more testing to figure out the best way to use this camera, and hopefully get to film some really cool stuff in the future.